I made this video some time back. We took it off the shelf, re-edited it, took out like 47,000 ums and 10 minutes of unnecessary pausing. If this information's helpful, hit the like. Thanks for watching. So I'm gonna start off with just some of the tools. This is a scan tool. You don't need it this fancy. It just needs to be able to read ABS codes. Not all scan tools can read ABS codes. So you just want something that can read the codes. Having something that can do live data, that's great. Uh, it is helpful in diagnosing, but it's not necessary for diagnosing, as long as you can read the codes. So scan tool is important. The most high tech, if you want to call it that, method is a signal generator and oscilloscope. I've had this thing for a while. It's Sane Smart DS213. It's just a little pocket oscilloscope. DVOM, multimeter, as long as it could do ohms. We'll be doing an ohm uh, reading on one of these tests. So one of those. And then jumper leads on one of the tests. So you don't necessarily need all of these. I'll just be running through how to use them for diagnosing, but whatever method you choose, those will be the tools that, that you'll need. Okay, so the tire's jacked up uh, on jack stands. I got both front tires off, so it, it is front wheel drive, so we can just put it in gear and have them both spin and watch uh, the difference between the two. So right now, if you can see that, that is a right front circuit failure. Very common code. What are some possible problems is the wheel speed sensor itself, possible, the ABS module, possible, or any of the various wires or connectors uh, in between those two. So how do we test the sensor? How do we test the circuit to make sure that we're finding uh, the right fault? We're pinpointing the issue so we can either replace a part or repair a part. I'm gonna start off with the least uh, tech, the low tech first. I'm gonna bring you over so you can see the vehicle and then we'll talk about that process. So this is the wheel speed sensor here. This is the harness for it. This connector, I have it unplugged. This is the sensor side connector. And then right here is the harness side connector. On some vehicles, you're able to swap this over to the other side. On this vehicle, you can't. There is a specific left and a specific right. On some vehicles, the left and the right are the exact same sensor. Therefore, you can just swap it. If you have the time, put the left on the right, the right on the left. And then you can see on your scan tool, did the code change? Right now it's a right front wheel speed sensor code. Did it change to be the left front wheel speed sensor code? If that's the case, then hey, we got a bad sensor. If it stays on the right side, then I would suspect that it's not the sensor. It would be from the harness up towards the ABS. Because this vehicle, you can't just swap it over. What else you could do is a jumper wire. You could put jumper on this sensor side. I'm gonna go under the vehicle to the other side and plug it into the harness side. So in effect, you're swapping it over, but you're just swapping the signal over to that harness. So I got my leads in over here, and we'll go to the other side and, and plug it into the harness side. And on the left front, we have it plugged into the harness side. If your code now changes to have both codes, because remember, this side's unplugged, so it'll throw a code. If the sensor is bad on the other side, it will continue to throw a code. So the left and the right now should both be coded. And you can see that here. So I have a left front and a right front now. If it only remained one-sided again, then I wouldn't be looking at a bad sensor. I'd be looking at a bad uh, wiring from the connector to the ABS module. Let's go ahead and look at some live data uh, so we can visualize this. So we're gonna be looking at the left front and the right front wheel speeds. I'm going to go ahead and start the car up, put it in gear. So this is uh, normal right now. So we know we have the right front wheel speed sensor is faulty because we have the code. The left front is working like it should. Increase it, it increases, decrease it, decreases. So, th so that's normal. We can even uh, graph it if we want. So that's what's happening. Dead sensor down here, good sensor up there. Let's go ahead and turn it off. So now let's plug in our right wheel speed sensor to our left side signal and see what happens. All right, so now we're moving again. Let me put it in gear, get it rolling. So the right front is connected to the left front signal. So if the right front wheel speed sensor was working, 
we'd see it up here. The left front is just left unplugged. Um, we could jumper wire it back to the other side. In that case, uh, if the left was good, it would be showing on the right front. If the right was good, it would be showing on the left front. But we only did one set of jumpers from the right front to the left front. So if the right front sensor was good, we see it up here. It's not good, so we don't see it. If we did see it and it was good, then again, we'd be suspecting that it was the wiring from the harness to the ABS or the ABS module itself. So there's one method of testing a wheel speed sensor just by using jumper wires. You can jump the sensor to the signal of the other side of the vehicle. If your vehicle has the capability of just swapping sensors, uh, then you could do that as well. And you're looking at the scan tool. Did anything change when I did that? If everything remains the same, then we're not looking at a sensor. Uh, we're looking at the harness, a break in the harness, something wrong with the wiring, or the ABS module. Okay, so now we're on to test number two. Uh, we'll up our tech to having a voltmeter. We're going to put it on ohms, and we're going to ohm out the uh, sensors. All right, so now we're at the sensor. What we want to ohm or check the ohms on is the sensor itself. Let me just show you. You can touch each of these little pins uh, with your ohm meter. I just have these little test leads here because it's easier for demonstration. One thing to keep in mind, whenever you do ohm testing or checking for ohms, you always want the circuit unplugged because when you do an ohm check, your voltmeter produces uh, an electric current in order to check uh, the resistance in this circuit here. So we'll put it on, let me see where my ohms are, right here. And it'll auto ohm on this, no big deal. And really what you're checking, some manuals will have a specific ohm reading for the, for, uh, the wheel speed sensor. If you don't have that, you don't even need that. You can just check left to right. So left side to right side you're comparing because you only have one bad one. So if it's bad, then it should be pretty obvious. So we have 5.33 mega ohm. So let's go check the other side and it should be pretty close to that. This is the sensor on the other side and you can see we're at 5.27 mega ohms. That's pretty close. If it had anything like an open in the circuit or if the ohm reading was way low or way high, now we're looking at an issue with the sensor. If they're the same, kind of like this, very close, then I wouldn't suspect the sensor. I'd be looking further up with the wiring harness or the ABS module. That's how you can check a wheel speed sensor using a multimeter, putting it on the ohm scale. Unplug the sensor, check the sensor side, and get the ohm reading. If you don't know what ohms it's supposed to be, that's okay. You can check between the left and the right and compare them. Same with the rear. Left, right, rear, compare them. One note though is that sometimes the fronts and the rears can be different ohms. But usually both fronts are going to be similar, both rears are going to be similar. So you can compare uh, left and right. So that's uh, that. The next is the most techie way to do it. My personal favorite, it is quick, it is simple. If you know how to use a signal generator, it tests the entire circuit from the sensor up to the ABS module. So that eliminates the fact that it's a module, it eliminates the fact that it's uh, any wiring, and deductive reasoning says, well, then it has to be the sensor. Okay, well, let me hook this up, and I'll show you how to use it real quick and what it does. So this is the setup. You can see right here, that's my signal generator. I'll be producing a sine wave. That's because this is an AC signal that comes out of these wheel speed sensors, so it'll be a sine wave. I can also produce a square wave if needed. And then I'm gonna start at 10 hertz, and then go up from there. 20, 50, 100, all the way up. Uh, this produces 20 kilohertz. I, I won't need that much. But as the hertz increase, the speed of the wheel, or what the computer thinks the speed of the wheel, uh, will increase. So in effect, this becomes the wheel speed sensor. So I'm sending out the same signal the wheel speed sensor would have uh, sent out if it was working properly. So this is my output. It goes to one of the terminals. If you're not getting a signal, then just swap terminals. Maybe in the wrong terminal. Uh, it won't hurt anything. If it is in the wrong terminal, just swap it over to the right terminal. And then the other side 
is just grounded. You want a good ground for the cleanest signal. All right, so I'm gonna put you guys right here. Well, maybe I can put them close to each other so you can see when I move this, this should move. Now this is the right front only. The vehicle's not moving, it's not started. It's just the right front and you'll see this right front should move. So let me set you up so you can see everything. All right, so now we have everything set up. You can see, look at the right front. And as I move the Hertz, whoop, you can see, so 500 Hertz, it's at 30 miles an hour. 1K is at 60 miles an hour. 2K is 115 miles an hour. So the computer is able to read the signal that I'm sending it. That tells me that from that connector all the way to the ABS module and the ABS module itself is good. Everything's good. So deductive reasoning would say that, hey, we must have a bad sensor or a bad tone ring. So pretty cool little tool. Didn't take any more time to set up than it did uh, the ohm meter. So that's how you can test a wheel speed sensor using a signal generator. I find this to be my preferred method. The time it takes to set up is the same as using a voltmeter. Super quick, simple, but it tests so much more. You get the entire circuit from the connector all the way to the ABS module and the ABS module's ability to interpret that signal into a wheel speed. So I find it to be quick, accurate, uh, and my preferred method. But not everybody has one of these lying around. So what methods do you like? Maybe post it in the comments down below. What ways do you test wheel speed sensors? Uh, I love learning new things. Hopefully this was beneficial. Maybe you learned something from this video. Uh, comment, like, subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.